For the last six months, I've been working on Python, the programming language, um, both within Fedora and uh, within our enterprise Linux product. Python is my favorite programming language. It's a, it combines extreme simplicity with a lot of power. So you can use it for writing very simple scripts if you're a beginning programmer, all the way up to complicated, powerful websites. On the subject of porting code between Python 2 and Python 3, there are many ways in which the process can be automated and the Python project has, has written a tool, 2 to 3, to help with that. But one of the things that that tool doesn't cover is if, you've, if you have an extension library, typically written in C, that you've wrapped in Python, that requires C code to glue together the Python code and the C library. And that has to be ported by hand. Some of this work requires thought, but a lot of it is tedious, what I call grunt work, where you're taking some code and you're always making the same change here, the same change there, and that is a big candidate for automation. So what I wrote, what I've done is created a tool called 2 to 3 c in um, homage to the 2 to 3 program, which can um, walk over your C source code and manipulate it and do a lot of the porting by hand. So it isn't a, a complete solution. You will have to, st if you're a Python developer who's got a, a C extension module, you will need to, to do some work, but it'll hopefully save you maybe half the effort. Some of my colleagues within Red Hat have been working on a tool called SystemTap, which you may have heard of. Uh, SystemTap is an instrumentation system in which you can write a script in a mini language uh, that uh, describes probing that you wish to do across the system. It's as if you, uh, and one can create probe points in which you say, here's a particular place where you can stick your virtual test meter and say, I want to see the reading here, I want to see the reading there. What I've done in Fedora 13 is uh, uh, instrumented the Python runtime so that Python function calls and function returns are exposed to system tap scripts so that you can hook in and say what Python function calls are happening across the entire system. So here I have a Fedora 13 virtual machine. I'm running PyFun Top, which is a system tap script which looks at every second the across the entire system the number of Python function calls and shows you however many there were. And if I run Python's regression test suite in this terminal and switch back to this, you can see along here I have the ID of the Python process the file name, the line information, the function name, and how many calls per second. If, for example, you were running a busy website in which the back end were implemented in Python, you could use this to see how many function calls were happening per second. Like, is your bottleneck talking to the database, or is it talking to, um, is, it, is your bottleneck creating HTML representations, and so on and so forth. I have here a system tap script which traces all Python function calls and returns in a hierarchical view. And if we set it running, it's now tracing across the entire system. So if we launch a Python application, in this case the GNOME Sudoku program, you see that uh, the screen fills with activity. And this is showing us all the activity that is needed in order to bring this, the Sudoku program running. This particular functionality might be useful to you if you have a complicated set of uh, logic within your Python code and you want to be sure exactly what is going on and which function calls which other function and so on. In the past, most of this, this probing has been available for just the kernel. Uh, so that you can see um, stats about disk activity and all the kind of low-level things that kernel developers care about. Unfortunately, if you use the standard C debugging tools to look at a Python process, you don't get a great deal of information. You see that we're running Python code and we're running other Python code, but it doesn't actually tell you what specific Python code you're running, just that you happen to be running Python code. and that's. You probably knew that already, judging by the fact that you're running user bin Python. Let me show you an example of a crash report from Python without the debugging hooks. You see here, this is a backtrace from the GNU debugger showing a crashing Python program. Um, I've actually set this up. It misuses a library in such a way that it, it causes a crash. 
and you see it's lots of hexadecimal numbers that uh, if you're not an experienced programmer you might find very intimidating. In fact, if you are an experienced programmer you probably dislike this. You see that uh, there are lots of calls to pi eval frame x here and here, which is telling us we're running Python code, but we already knew that. And all we know is we get is a hexadecimal address for the internal representation of that Python code. But it doesn't actually tell us what the Python code is. If I now show you the, uh, the new, uh, what this looks like with my new debugging hooks, uh, you see that the top part is the same. But with the bottom part, you see that we get file online information. And it is, in fact, telling us detailed information, like here's the set of globals in the program and all their values. So this is an additional tool that you could use to try and get more insight into what's going wrong.